Hello and welcome to our webinar. My name is Andre Lapine. I'm the CEO and founder of Zebra BI. And uh, today I would like to present different ways of tracking monthly variances in financial planning and analysis. Now I'm sure that you already have your annual budgets for 2017 prepared. You have them broken down by month. So now the big question is how do you track the, the monthly performance, uh, meaning comparing actuals to your budget or to your plan. Now this may sound like a trivial task, although when I saw this chart, um, I thought, okay, maybe it's not such a trivial you know, topic. So if we take a look, for example, here, we have a very interesting um, data set actually. So we have some actuals here. Uh, we obviously have some previous year's values like from 2015, 2014. So we have a time series here. Then I have the plan from 2016, the plan for the next year, 2017. I have some forecasts. So very interesting data here, but it's all jammed into this chart, which I'm sure that Edward Tufty would call uh, the chart junk. I don't think anybody can really understand what's going on here. Uh, okay, so you might you might argue that you have a much better looking charts like this. So let's take a look at another one. So this one is obviously much prettier. It's designed in a much nicer way. It's very clean and so on. But wait a minute, I have some questions here. So first of all, this is monthly sales development. Is this good or bad? And why is this good or bad? Um, how did we perform this month and so on. So for example, the, the question, how did we perform this month? From this chart, first I need to understand uh, what my data represents. So obviously this is, these are my actuals here, so it's gray. Now I take a look at the chart and I see the gray columns here. Obviously uh, in October, November, uh, December, I don't have this value. So it looks like September is my current month and um, the light gray is previous year so it looks like we have a, some negative growth from the previous year uh, and uh, now I can do the comparison to plan we are a little bit above the plan okay so I get the I get the picture here uh, it's not too accurate because I don't have the, the labels I don't know how much are we above the plan uh, I don't know how much is the, you know, what is, what is the actual growth from previous year and, and so on. Are we going to meet the budget or not? One of the key goals in monthly reporting is to assess what is our current performance, what is our year-to-date performance, so from January until now, and um, this should give me a picture where are we at the moment and also an understanding, um, is this performance good or bad? Are we on the track and are we going to meet the annual budget or not? Uh, so from this chart, for example, I have just no idea where we are in terms of year-to-date values. I can assess each month, but there is just no way I can get the picture where we are if we uh, accumulate all those numbers to see the year-to-date value, January to September. So this is one big drawback of side-by-side -side monthly charts like, like this one. Even though it looks very pretty, it does not really help me make any kind of decision. I don't know exactly where we are and I don't know where we are headed and uh, I have no explanation. So let's take a look at something completely different. Now, um, this is a very different picture. Uh, let me first explain a few things here. Here at the bottom, I have my monthly performance. So this is now monthly, my monthly actuals until uh, September. So in September, we have $82,000, for example. And here on the top, I have my monthly variance. Okay, so this is now minus $9,000 um, below the plan. Uh, 
so now I see for each month what was the actual and what was actually the monthly variance. Okay, and now here, as we, as we move up, um, the line chart here um, represents the year-to-date values. Okay, so this is now this is now my these are now my year-to-date values. I see that year-to-date the so the actual year-to-date up until September is seven thousand and fifty-five, uh, yeah, seven hundred fifty-five fifty-five thousand uh, dollars is now seven hundred and fifty-five thousand dollars. Okay, and this is clearly above my baseline here. So I see that even though uh, we had some negative development here in September, like uh, cumulative, uh, up until September we are still um, above the plan. And uh, also there's a dotted line here, which goes up until, um, up until December, which is my forecast. Okay, so not, e not only that I see where we are at the moment, I also have a forecast. Um, until the end of year and I can do the comparison. I can compare this to my annual budget here and I can clearly see that we are on a good track. We will finish um, above our plan. Um, all right, so now uh, I can insert some comments, some explanations. First of all, uh, September year to date, we are 4% above the plan. Um, I can write some additional comments, what are the reasons, how come that we are doing so good. Uh, then for the forecast, uh, I can add exactly, you know, the value. The current forecast is that um, uh, we will finish our year 4.7% above the plan. And the last one here is the explanation for the current month. Yeah, September, unfortunately, was not that good, so we are 10% uh, below the plan. So these are now actually the key comparisons that you need to present each month. Now, I still have some space here, uh, so you can even throw in a um, moving annual total. So it's like an annual value of rolling 12 months, and it shows me a longer term development of, of our sales uh, because this is uh, the sum of rolling 12 months and it sort of um, compensates for you know the seasonality from month to month it's always the full year and it's clearly in my case here it's clearly going up so even in in, in the long term we have a nice development of our, our sales um, our annual sales are going up and even the uh, forecast is rising here so all in all, this is a very nice picture. So, uh, yeah, hopefully your sales looks like this as well. And um, okay, now uh, you have different options how to how to present your variances, your actuals and budget. So you see, I'm using um, very specific types of charts. These are called variance charts. And today I will be showing a lot of um, variance charts, obviously. And, uh, for example, uh, if you just want to uh, keep this, this whole picture consistent uh, and present everything with, with line charts, uh, then you would uh, also use the line chart here at the bottom for um, current month, so for monthly values. This chart is called the Z chart, obviously for, for the shape, for the Z shape here. And if you have a chart like this, now, this is the value of September. The next month, uh, you get your actuals for October. Um, everything will be updated. Even your forecast will be updated. Now, we are, uh, now our latest forecast is uh, only 3.7% above the plan. The next month, um, you know, each month, uh, you are, as you are narrowing in towards the annual plan, uh, you have more accurate, date, accurate data, obviously. And now one month to go, forecast looks like 3.5% above the plan. And then finally, when you have all, all the actuals uh, for the full year, you have the final result here, 3.6% above plan, which is very good, I guess. And in, if you're also able to additionally explain 
the reasons, how come that we have performed so well. Uh, you can even add uh, you know, small charts like this uh, to explain, for example, here I have this, this variance here broken down by strategic business units or you can do it by products, by customers or regions or whatever is most important for, for your business. And uh, yeah, so you can just add um, another chart and visually explain uh, the development. Like in my case here, some business units were doing above the plan here, yeah, the four units, and then the last two units were below the plan. And this is now my uh, explanation for the total. So I hope I didn't scare you with this picture. Um, this is actually my template number 11. So it's the most complex picture I'm going to show today. Uh, so we'll return to more basic ways and tr just try to explain everything from the scratch. Obviously, you see that I'm using certain types of charts. Uh, for example, here I have a, a variance chart. This one here is called a plus minus chart. So it just shows the variance, um, monthly variance here. Uh, this one is actually called the lollipop chart. It shows the relative variance. So this is now my uh, variance to budget in percent. So it's a different shape here than uh, the one that shows the absolute variances. So we'll cover all the variance charts and we'll also cover the challenges. Now many of you have asked me to show less slides in PowerPoint and do more action in Excel. So let me just switch to, switch to Excel now. And here I have uh, some actuals and some budget. Um, it's a monthly time series like this. And let's insert a chart. So for example, like this, a typical side-by-side -side chart. This is what most people would do in Excel, right? So uh, Excel will choose the colors for you. So this is now my budget. This is now my actual. I don't see the variances. Uh, I don't have the labels and, and so on. So let's do this in a different way. Okay, um, I will switch to Zebra BI and here you have the variance charts and first of all variance charts they come in two different flavors okay so let's go let's go straight for this one this one is called the integrated variance chart let's just switch the uh, the labels to thousands like this okay um, all right, so it's integrated variance because I have the actual value here. So, if, for example, in January it was uh, 27,000 um, euros, for example, and this was minus two, okay? So 2,000 below my budget, uh, 27,000, 29,000, that's minus two. Uh, in February, we were on the budget. In March, we were above the budget and so on. So I see the actuals, I see the variances. This is a nice, uh, nice way of showing the variances because they're all in one chart, which saves space, presents the variances as well as actuals. And the, um, the next uh, advantage is that the variance is already displayed in proportion to, um, to the actuals. Okay, so that I see exactly how much, um, you know, um, exactly how, how large is, is, this, is this variance. And if it's a smaller one, I get um, a smaller column for the variance here. And if it's a really big one, I will see, you know, a, a, a large amount of, of red color or, or green color, which means that my visual attention will be exactly where the important variance is. Okay, so this was the first way of, sh of showing this. Um, the next way is you can just insert um, a variance chart. You can just do a simple uh, plus minus chart. So if the variance is positive, it's green. Uh, otherwise, it's, it's red. So it's just the variance. Okay, let's put this one to 1000. Of course, um, the advantage here is that you have your variance um, from month to month, you can compare which one is uh, bigger, which one is smaller, but you don't have uh, the actuals. So my, my base here is skipped. I don't have it. 
and uh, if you want to um, add the base then you can do something like this you can just have two charts okay so in reporting of course you can use combinations of charts so for example if you have your base like this and I just switch the style to um, yeah, to a darker one um, so there's a little bit more contrast so now I have my actuals here I have the January value and then I have the you know you see this this is the budget uh, behind it so it, this is sort of like side by side comparison only here it's a little bit more compressed so so the columns are a little bit uh, overlapped and then I have the variance in a separate chart now of course this variance here is not rendered on the same scale as the base value here okay so you might want to do something like this let's just delete this and this time we'll insert the same plus minus variance chart only this time without the labels because I already have the labels here at the bottom and now uh, what I will do is I will just select the charts and scale them okay scale them uh, let's fix the labels in thousands uh, just to be completely pixel perfect you would need to align this to the left and so on so now this is another picture where my uh, variances are presented uh, they are um, rendered in this in the right scale so it's you know similar to this solution only as you see this solution is more compact it um, sort of it uses less uh, less space okay so you see these are the two options so now of course you can add more charts on the top so let's try another idea we'll insert another variance chart this one this one is called the uh, lollipop chart uh, and I will use it to present the relative variance okay so I'll just switch here and calculate the variance in percent so it's like this so since Zebra, Zebra BI calculates all the variances and so on you don't have to you know type formulas like actual minus budget and you know um, you know populate your, your worksheets with a lot of uh, very, you know formulas and so on because Zebra BI does that for you uh, and now what you can do okay let's make it a little bit smaller and now you can stack this chart on top of on top of this one and this is how you start building your monthly report okay so um, just to make sure that things are understandable you can add labels so for example some standard labels for this would be okay so Delta for you know for the difference for the variance uh, uh, it's the difference to uh, to budget and this one is in percent so you can do something like this of course you can also show the label show the percent sign inside the chart in the label so you can add labels like this but as you see if you have a lot of you know um, you know if then the labels are uh, are growing you you have more characters presented on the picture so it's actually a better idea uh, to skip um, the unit the display of the unit on the chart and just put it uh, in the label before the chart and now this one will be this one is Delta Delta BU okay and these are now my actuals and, and budgets okay so this was now my first way of showing the variances let's put this to, to PowerPoint okay so you can do you can do it in this way or uh, as we said in the integrated variance chart now the labels um, for variances uh, you can actually also um, display the variances in relative uh, terms here in, in, in this chart and now if we export also this chart you have another slide another way of showing your monthly variances like this
Okay, let's move on and uh, introduce the forecast. Okay, now we have a different situation. We have some forecast values. So I have actuals up until September, but then uh, until the end of year, I have some forecast values. Now, if you uh, try to display this with the integrated variance chart, you get this picture. Again, let's switch to thousands. Of course, you can also use one decimal place like this. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so these are now my forecasts. Uh, the standard way of doing this is by using uh, this striped diagonal pattern. Uh, these are all recommendations from the IBCS. Everything that I'm doing today is compliant with international business communication standards. Now, if you display um, absolute uh, variances here and you would also like to display the relative variances then you have another combination another possible combination to use the lollipop chart for the relative variances like this okay and then just put the relative variances as a separate chart on the top okay so maybe something like this let's just align it I'm using the alt uh, alt key here so if you just if you resize a chart in Excel and then use the alt um, uh, key while you're you know resizing the chart uh, Excel will align um, the size of the chart uh, to your columns here so now everything is aligned so you can always put um, relative variances in a separate chart on top of absolute uh, values in, in, in your uh, report now we have a way of showing monthly variances but more importantly what is my year-to-date value okay i don't have the year-to-date value I, I see the variances very clearly uh, but for example here i have no idea what is the you know cumulative variance in percent or you know in uh, absolute terms so let's explore the options how you can uh, do that uh, let me actually show this in another report. Okay, so we have seen this. This time I actually have a comparison to previous year. Um, of course, everything that I've shown so far, uh, if you don't have the budget, you can, you can use the same type of variance charts uh, to present the growth from previous year, the variances from, from previous year. So either this option with three charts here or uh, you know, you integrate your absolute variances and have a, a separate chart for relative variances or even skip the chart for the relative variances and just display um, um, percentages in the same chart. But now something more uh, interesting, okay. Let's say you have a chart here for the relative variances like this. These are now my monthly variances. Let me just put them here. I'll switch to relative. So we have this so far, but these are only monthly variances. I have no idea what the year to date value is. Okay, so what I'll do now is I will insert another one. This is, this is already a total of my previous year, total of, of actual. So it's like the year to date value here. I will use the same chart move it here, switch to relative, so the percentage, okay? But this time, this one is, um, this one is for year to date. These are my monthly variances. Monthly variances, first of all, I will make it the same size. Something like this, is it? All right, I have selected both of them. Scale, you see? Now I have added uh, this little chart here, it's called extended chart so you can use this idea to add um, variances for year to date or full year and so on so you can just add chart just make sure that of course all of them are scaled so now i know that you know the year to date value here uh, in percentage is 5.4 percent above the plan okay of course you can do the same uh, thing for the absolute variances but let's use another idea now this part uh, is really an excellent idea i like it a lot 
Uh, and uh, let me just show you. So we will use this time, we will not use the variance chart, but we will actually use the waterfall chart. We'll use the waterfall chart for absolute variances. Okay, let's, let's make it let's just show it like this. Um, put the labels to thousands. Okay, just, just approximately now, so you'll get the idea. Okay, so instead of putting variances in plus minus chart, so they are aligned on, on the base here, uh, you use the waterfall chart, and the waterfall chart is actually the best way to present the cumulative values. Because you see if you have a positive variance here in January and positive in February and so on and so on, you can see how the cumulative value, so the year-to-date value is growing and then, you know, descending here and growing again and so on. So you actually see the development um, of each month, but also how this uh, monthly variance contributes to the final result, to the year-to-date result which is, I think, a fantastic idea. Uh, it's the most intuitive way, um, you know, to show where you are, not only uh, on monthly um, basis, but also on, on year-to-date basis. Okay, so instead of using this one, you can actually delete this one and just use um, the variances in a waterfall chart like this which is great. Um, now I see that I'm above, you know, my baseline and, um, but I still don't have the year-to-date value here. So now you can use the same idea. Just put, uh, you know, put another chart like this uh, here and then you, you know, you, you, you make sure you scale it and you have a solution with the extended chart at the end, but you can actually do that uh, inside the waterfall chart. So you add the 13th element. Let me show you here. Um, so this time, uh, this time I have, instead of just monthly values, I have added the sum total here of the previous year values, sum total here of the absolute, um, of the uh, actual values. And now I will insert this chart. Okay, so you see now, instead of this waterfall, I'll delete this one and use this one, which already has 13 elements. So this, this is 12. This is now 13. Okay, my last column here. Let me switch to thousands. And this is now my year-to-date value. Okay, this is year-to-date here. And, and it's done, of course. Don't forget to scale your charts. This is now exactly the picture. Um, I have monthly values and this is my total in December in the absolute chart. Now, this idea works only for absolute um, values and only on measures uh, which can be added from month to month. So these are called additive measures like sales and volume and so on. This will not work on any non-additive or semi-additive uh, KPIs or measures such as ratios, for example, costs per uh, employee or, or something like that. Okay, and uh, in Zebra BI, uh, you see you need to type the equal sign. The equal sign means that this last element here is uh, a calculation, it's, it's a total, right? If you don't have the equal sign, then this would be just another variance, you know, stacked on, on, on top of the previous element. But since this is a calculation, the end result, you just need to put the equal sign here and you get this result. Um, so I hope um, you like this idea. I like it a lot. So now I have the 5.4%, but this 5.4% is the growth from previous year to this year. It's the total annual growth and here, I don't have the totals, I just have the monthly values. So if you now want to show the, you know, the overall picture, you might want to do something completely different. Again, uh -huh. let me move this. And this time, let's do a classic bridge chart. 
All right, make it bigger. And switch the display of labels to thousands. Okay, so now this is a completely different picture because as you see, uh, the monthly variances were, were very big compared to uh, my monthly values, but if you also display the totals, so this is now 2015, you see it's the sum total of previous year, uh, this one is the 2016, so it's the sum total of my actuals, and here in between I have my monthly variances, okay? So this is now the big picture, okay? Now this, um, now the 5.4% Where's the 5.4%? If you add the difference highlight, you see, this is the 5.4%. It's the difference from 2015 to 2016. Okay, and now this is my, this is my big picture here. And now I can see, you know, um, now I can actually see what is the real size of the variances. And, um, I like this idea a lot, so it's a classic bridge chart just showing the development from previous year to uh, this year. You can, you can use the same idea um, for the budget, so instead of previous year here, you put the budget here and then variances, actual minus budget, and then you see, um, you know, then you see uh, at the end, are you above the budget or not. Now this chart will work uh, beautifully if your variances are big enough, okay? Um, first of all, um, make sure that you don't have uh, your chart, that your charts are not too small, okay? So for example, this, it doesn't work. Um, and you know, the difference between the full year and then the variance in each month can be dramatic. In, in, in some cases, it's, it's, you know, it's really huge. So for example, if you have some, uh, let's say employees, okay, em uh, the number of employees from pre in previous year, and then uh, you can have maybe one, 100,000 employees, and then each month you have just a few people, you know, um, uh, a very small churn, just a few people coming and going, uh, and the difference is very dramatic. So make sure that, first of all, your charts are bigger, like this, and uh, if this really does not work, so in cases like employees and so on, then you can do, um, th then you can also do this. Uh, you can actually break the axis, okay, warning, caution, <laughs> three times caution here. This is not recommended by the IBCS standards. What I'm showing here is, um, you know, it's a very dangerous practice um, because let me just put this chart, uh, just send to back. I have some comment signs here. Um, let's remove them. You see now I have 5.4%. Um, everything is very visual. You can see the variances. You have the previous year, this year. Very nice. You know, if you put this to, um, if you export this and, you know, add another slide to your presentation, it looks really nice. But you see the value here is not really, 5% visually, you know, it looks closer to maybe one third or one fourth of, of the value, right? But not 5%, which is one twelfth uh, of, of the value, okay? So, you know, be very careful uh, when breaking, breaking the axis. Do it when you really need it and it's like the last resort. <laughs> that, uh, you know, you use when presenting the, the variances. But, you know, still this is uh, the, the waterfall, the bridge, classic bridge chart is another idea how to um, present your variances. And, uh, for example, um, if you don't break the axis, then you will have uh, some additional space here. So what you can do is, like here you see, I have actually put um, chart, another chart on top of my waterfall chart uh, to display monthly values. So you can have the full year value, the monthly value uh, values at the top, uh, at the bottom, then you have the variances in the bridge chart. Uh, now you can actually add, also add the relative variances, something like 
this, you, you put them inside, maybe a little bit smaller and switch to relative and you know uh, you can use this space to to add um, additional information if this is too um, you know if this becomes too cluttered cluttered then you can just make this a little bit smaller and put variances on the top this would be um, this would be the most uh, more, more classic way like this so you know variances on the top And this one at the bottom, maybe something like this. This is more classic, but you know, um, this means that the chart is a little bit smaller. Again, you know, uh, you don't see the variances, so maybe it's better to put the variances just uh, inside and, and make this one a little bit bigger. So it's always a, a trade-off. I think now this was the sixth or the seventh way of showing your variances. Let's close this one and take a look at probably the most famous template for tracking monthly variances. Okay, this one was um, developed by Dr. Rolf Hickert and it's everything that I've shown so far uh, combined in one single slide. Okay, this one is very complex. Uh, but um, it uses this idea of the bridge chart. So, for example, here we have the previous year value, then we have um, the monthly variances to previous year, so the development from previous year in the bridge chart. Um, this bridge chart is even more complex because it has actual versus previous year up until uh, um, August, for example, and then you have the forecast until the end of the year. So you see uh, the development uh, until, you know, the end of year, the forecasted one, and here at the end you have the difference highlights. So it looks like that will end our year, uh, you know, $29,000 uh, before, uh, below the uh, previous year value. Uh, then you can use the same idea uh, the, uh, you know, you can use the budget here and have the comparison to budget so you can see um, whether your uh, sales is developing towards the budget, you know, below or above it and so on. You have the monthly values at the bottom, uh, these are the actuals, and then you have the forecast until the end of the year and here on top you have previous year uh, relative variances uh, to previous year and relative variances budget. Um, so this one is definitely the most complex one. Um, it's everything together, so that's that's definitely the advantage. Um, but in practice, I've seen that people just uh, think it's uh, a little bit too much on the complex side. But that's probably not the only issue with this, with this one. This one will actually work only if you have, um, you know, um, if your variances are big enough, if your variances are very small, then you will you will have um, you know you will have situations where your budget uh, uh, you know will uh, sort of overlap. So so these all these lines here will will overlap and, and, and so on. So it really works well, very well um, if your variances are big enough. Uh, if they are not, you can do the same thing. You can you can just make this one. Uh, this, this whole part here um, much bigger and then put the uh, relative variances inside of charts or maybe you can simplify it um, you know and skip some of the uh, relative charts here and just you know uh, in, in some cases it's it's uh, completely enough just to show the development in absolute values here and then have the percent maybe here um, at, at the end or you know just for the year-to-date value and so on. So maybe you can simplify it a little bit so that it'll work on your uh, on your data. But this is probably the most the most famous one I, I would say. All right, um, now I think we have um, we have exhausted the ideas of, of monthly variances but we, uh, we were showing only 12 Values. We were just showing the variances, you know, 
for your whole company or just for one business unit and so on. Now the real challenge in the real world is you may have a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of countries, a lot of uh, products, uh, a lot of business units and so on. So let's see what you can do with more complex data sets. Um, for example, let me select four countries and again I, I have actuals, I have budgets and some, you know, monthly data series, time series. And first of all, let's try the integrated column chart. Okay, I got four countries here. Um, you can switch to relative and this is already, you know, the first idea. So you have the monthly values, you have relative percentages and this is your, you know, this is your report for, for example, for four business units or something like that. You can simply uh, use four charts like this. Now, if you have more um, units, more data series, then um, if you do this, you will end up with, let's see what Zebra will do now. Um, now we're diving into complexity here, so I need to make it smaller. So you see now I have 12 charts. I have monthly development with the um, variances for 12 different countries. And when you, you know, want to put this on one single slide, things become really, really challenging. First of all, I personally think that, uh, you know, for um, when you have a lot of charts, the columns do not work anymore because you get this visual clutter uh, of vertical, um, vertical bars here. Um, which is sort of unpleasant and um, it obscures the development of values and so on. So column charts actually work visually uh, only if you have big enough um, charts. So in examples like before, we had, where we had just one chart. Now when you have more units, um, then you want to explore a few more charts. Um, it's better maybe to do it in line charts. So for example, here is one idea. Instead of using the column charts, just use the area charts. Okay, this is now the area chart. Of course, it's still complex. It's still the same data set, but in, it's a little bit more clear now because of the lines. Uh, so one thing is, you know, uh, use the line instead of column, but this is not enough. So uh, you see um, there's no space um, for all the labels. So what you want to do is reduce the labels. Um, so we'll just switch the label density to display first value, last value and minimum, maximum, for example, like this. The next thing you want to make sure that uh, you sort the charts. So, for example, let's sort by the last actual value here. Uh, so, actual last value, sort descending. So, this is a little bit better. So, now I understand that, you know, um, at least in December, my last, you know, my most important country here is France and, and then USA and, and, and so on, right? So, you need to make it, uh, you make it really, really clean. Um, okay, this is now this is now actual, and the budget line, and then the variances are colored red and green when the actual is you know above the budget and so on. What you also um, might want to do is just display the variances. So use the plus minus chart. Okay, if you do it, for example, in this way, this is now a different type of analysis. Now I'm only looking at my variances, my, my monthly variances. Let's make this again. Let's make it, let's make it fit inside my report. Again, the label density, let's switch it, make it more clear, right? Then, of course, sort. Again, let's sort. This time we'll sort the variance. Uh, charts by the variance. Let's just do it by the average variance and see what we get. 
Okay, so now we get, you know, the countries where, uh, you know, the, the, the variance was more positive. Uh, on average, Italy, France, Russia um, were performing, USA were performing, performing um, yeah, um, better. Uh, and here at the bottom, you will get countries where, which are, at least on average, uh, you know, uh, have uh, negative variances and, and so on. But you see now, again, the same problem. So now I'm actually looking at uh, monthly values. I don't have the uh, sense of the total of the year-to-date values. So let's use the waterfall idea on a small multiple. What do we get? All right, so this one, the waterfall chart. It takes a little bit more time, uh, but it's still quite quick. And so now what do I get? Oh, all right. I haven't actually done this in, in real life, but I just thought this, this was, an, was an interesting idea. Um, so now we are using the waterfall chart. You need to, you need to sort it. Uh, let's sort it by the contributions. So these are now the, the contributions, the, the, the variances, and just sort it by average, yeah, average contribution, like we did before. Um, like we did before. And you see, now, um, now maybe this is an interesting insight into variances, because now, for example, in Italy, I see uh, monthly variances like this, but I also see how they stack up during the year. So I also have this, um, you know, idea of the whole development. Everything is very positive and we are um, quite above the baseline, quite above the plan here in Italy and then in France, in Russia and so on. And now, you know, you will then in the middle, you will get some countries where the, which are more or less, you know, on the target. Right. And then at the end, uh, we clearly see some countries where the uh, all the variances were below the plan. And from month to month, we are just sinking into minus here. So you see the waterfall chart gives you this idea where the things are moving. Um, you know, when you when you sum all the variances um, on, on, the, on one chart. So this is now how you get into, how you tackle more, uh, you know, into more complexity. Um, again, here you, you, you need to do something with the labels. What you, you can do is, for example, one thing that you can do is, um, we'll, just, we'll make a copy of this visual style here. And let's just call it uh, zebra small or something like that. And I just made a copy of, of my visual style here. And now what I'll do is I'll just switch the font, the labels, uh, and the labels inside the chart. And we'll, uh, we'll use smaller labels and also smaller um, axis labels here. I'll just do it here on the chart. If you just switch the style on, on your chart, so let's use the zebra small. No. Okay, so now my, um, my new style was applied and this is now font, uh, font size uh, 9, uh, right? Uh, which is, you know, it's not good to switch font sizes from page to page in your reports, but in some cases you just need to do that. So. Uh, just to you know, just to show you that you have this option um, as well. Um, but actually, if you can just stick to one size, to one font size uh, across all your reports, like font size ten or font size eleven, just try to stick to that. Uh, only in certain extreme cases, uh, you know, you will need to to do this. Just make sure you don't go below, you know, font size nine or in really extreme cases font size eight good this is how you can tackle the complexity of more business units and so on with just small multiples there's another idea and um, let's show a similar case here this time i would like to present something so so far we had 12 data categories. 
from January to December, this is your typical data set. But in some cases, it's actually nice if you use um, 13 data points, okay? So let me show you this, this little chart here. It's just one simple chart, okay? And this is now my market share. This is a market share for, um, yeah, for, for one brand on the market. And this time, I have my data series from January 15 to January 16. So it's 13 months. Why? Because you want to um, present, you see, you want to present the difference. Um, uh, so the, the variance of month over month. So actually year over year, January this year to January previous year. And you can do it with this difference, difference highlight. Okay, so this is a plain uh, line chart. Then you can use the difference highlight. And just use the first, um, yeah, the, the first point in your chart, and now you understand that you know you understand the, the development. And this is your variance to previous year here. So my um, my market share went up for twenty point seven percent. Actually, in the case of market shares, you want to display this in percentage points. So this would be then actually the, the absolute um, difference, you know, between 20% and 16%, it's 3, 3%. Okay, if you want to have it a little bit more precise, then it's 3.4%. Okay, and so this is one idea how, how you can do it. And now, if you have a, you know, if you have more brands, like for, in my example, I have eight brands. Actually, you can just do it the same in the same way for all the brands at once. So again, you use the small multiples, uh, small multiples. Okay, let's try to fit this on one page because you'll see you you will always have a, a big challenge trying to fit everything on on one page. So, for example, these are now eight charts. You can you can just use them in a matrix matrix like this. Um, okay, now you can add the difference highlight for all the charts like this. Okay, um, sorry, and switch your comparison to previous year. Okay, so now you see. Um, now you see for each brand what is the development and of course what is the uh, uh, let's do it in absolute so this is now percentage point and uh, you have a report like this okay so you see if you make it once you make it really small you have a challenge also with the labels on the chart itself um, so let me show you how you can fix that instead of, um, yeah, instead of labels, like with three letters, you can just use really short labels, just one letter for the month. That's enough. And, um, to also show you another idea, you can use again, this chart. So you can actually use the um integrated variance chart on data sets like this so only this time what i have done is i have used uh the first point uh in my chart so the first first data category in my chart um as the comparison right so instead of the budget or forecast or previous year comparison i have used the first point here as my comparison right and it's just the same and I just use the same value as the comparison uh, throughout uh, the 13 month and I get this okay so now I have my eight uh, my eight brands like like this again you want to make it clean so This amount of labels is uh, is probably enough. Um, make sure you sort them. So let's sort them by 
um, let's display it, for example, sort them by the last actual value. So uh, the, the market share in, in, in January last year, so we see which ones are, you know, on the top and so on. Actually, you can now go in and, and also add, again, the difference and actually display, you know, what is the growth here from previous year of the market share. We'll do it in percent points. So, for example, this is another type of an analysis where, you, where you're using um, variance charts, but this time on 13 uh, data categories, right? And this can work uh, for, especially for uh, KPIs and measures like ratios and so on. Um, especially for non-additive um, ratios, uh, it's a good idea to use 13, rolling 13 months. Um, so you always have the year over year comparison in the chart. Okay, I hope this was uh, understandable. And with this area charts, I would like to finish my webinar for today uh, with the last idea we'll return back to the problem of showing year-to-date values, okay? Uh, this time I have here um, an EBITDA compared to my budget and forecast. Look at this. This is now the area chart, so the line chart which, has, which uses the, the area to display the variance Okay, so um, let's first check how it looks like in, in a column column chart. So if you use this chart, the standard, um, yeah, the standard column chart. And now if you will have year-to-date values, so this is all year-to-date, okay, all year-to-date. Um, you will always get this diagonal chart here. So I have my ABDA uh, year-to-date values. Then I have my gross profit, for example. Again, you know, it looks like this, you know, and then you have some volumes. And if this is year to date, again, you will get this diagonal chart here, right? And, you know, then, you know, you don't have the, you don't have the, uh, the space. So most people then, try to make charts smaller to fit everything on one page and and then you get uh, you end up with this chart uh, which is very uh, small and all these variances are compressed and uh, you cannot really see anything so instead of using this chart uh, you you can again use the line chart with this with the areas Okay, so this was this idea. So let's throw in ABDA, uh, do the same for gross profit. I have the ABDA and gross profit. Okay, now instead of, instead of uh, putting charts one below each other, okay, if you want to make charts bigger, then it's a much better idea to put charts side by side. So use the left and right um, template, so like this, okay? And this is now better because, uh, of course, the charts are, are bigger, uh, everything is, you know, more visible. Now, with, um, if you are using line charts, then everything is much more clean because you're using less ink. Okay, you're using less black color and so on. And this is this is a recommendation of Edward Tufte. You know, the famous uh, data ink theory says that the less uh, ink you use uh, to represent data, the better it is. Um, so it's it's much cleaner in this way. And there's another advantage. Look at this. Now these two charts are not scaled at the moment. So it's obvious that we have the gross profit is, you know, um, a bigger number than EBITDA, right? So it's just the nature of, of those two. Now look at this. Um, let's, let's try something. Um, I will just assign, for example, this space for uh, two charts. 
and I will do something new now. Um, let me just mark this with a. Okay, just okay. Uh, we'll put the chart inside. So I'll oops, I'll move this chart here. Okay, so it occupies exactly this uh, this space that I have assigned. Now I'll just remove it and do the same for the gross profit. I'll just move my gross profit here, like this. Okay. Now what I'll do is I'll select both charts and just align them. Simply align left and align top. Okay. This looks like, um, of course, everything is diagonal and so on, but those charts are not scaled. And if you scale them, of course, the ABDA will uh, be smaller and everything will be visible like this. Okay. Of course, now you need to solve the title. So this is my gross profit. Um, well, let's just put this label here. And now the problem is, now I have two charts, one on top of the other. Right? That's why all Zebra BI charts are transparent. Uh, you know, the, the background of the chart is transparent in Zebra BI. Uh, so you can do little tricks like this. Now the only problem is, I need to get uh, to my chart, uh, which is below ABDA, just to move the, the title here. So you have two options here. You can um, click on the, um, yeah, on the chart, which is on the top, uh, right click, and then just send this chart to the back. Everything looks the same, but this time my ABDA chart is on the top, so I can move the label and just put it here manually, for example. Um, which actually brings me back to my Z chart. Finally, you can do, um, you can create the Z chart. I have used exactly the same idea here. Um, so um, you see, I'm using the variance chart here, um, the column variance chart here, uh, the line uh, chart with areas here, and then a simple line chart for the mat. And so these are three charts uh, superimposed, one on top of each other. And this is now my, my final um, you know, template. Um, you can even do tricks like this, you know, you can have an option to switch for the charts. So if you would like to receive this template, just uh, let me know, we'll, we'll send you out the, send out the finalized template uh, done in Excel with Zebra BI. Uh, so now everything, of course, will work. So for example, if you have, you know, the actuals like this or, you know, smaller ones, um, you just type in your, your values and everything will adjust. And this is now your Z chart. With this, I'm ending our webinar for today. So we have seen a lot of examples. Um, just to remember all of those, the Z chart, uh, the multiples and so on. So hopefully you now have some ideas, some new ideas, uh, which will replace your typical spreadsheets, uh, especially for the monthly development. The tables are really not working for, for this. Okay, guys, uh, before we dive into uh, Q&A, your questions, um, I would just like to um, share some resources with you. This was our 11th webinar of the Zebra BI uh, webinar series. Uh, if you want to take a look at the recordings of our previous webinars, uh, they are all uh, stored uh, on our web, um, Zebra BI website. So if you go to Zebra BI, um, you have a section here called resources. And here uh, you see you have some, you have the blog white papers, but here in the middle, uh, you have the webinars. So we record all our webinars. Uh, if you're interested in the topics of um, management reporting, data visualization, um, presentations, business presentations, dashboards, and so on. You can just uh, go to our website. So all these uh, webinars are free. So maybe you'll find another interesting topic. Otherwise, um, stay with us. Uh, we will uh, continue doing the webinars. If you uh, would like to try this yourself, uh, then of course uh, you can go to uh, Zebra BI free trial. Um, there's a download available, 30 days free trial, so it's a full version of, of Zebra BI, so you can just try.
to do this yourself. Of course, if you are using uh, Excel, uh, this works in all versions of Excel from 2010 upwards, so 2010, 13, and 16. And now uh, to your questions. Uh, that's very simple. Um, whenever you have time series, um, so like month, like we had in our webinar, or quarters, or um, annual values, so yearly development, or just time, date time values, then uh, use charts with horizontal axis. All right, so you would do this with time, but you would not use charts with vertical axis for time. Okay, I've seen this, uh, you know, from time to time I see things like this, but it's, you know, it's just better to stick to the uh, convention. Time runs from left to right, so uh, whatever chart you choose, so it may be a line chart, uh, you would do it like this, or, you know, the, um, the pin chart. If it's time, then it runs from left to right. Very simple. And then, if you have anything else, like you have uh, customers, uh, business units, cost centers, um, regions, countries, and so on. So, for example, uh, business unit one and business unit two, like this, okay. business unit one, two, and so on. You would not use left to right, okay? So this would be only time. Uh, you see, this is not working because then your labels, um, the axis labels start to turn around, you have a lot of problems, and it's much, much easier to use just charts with vertical axis, okay? So in this case, just turn the chart around, and um, everything will be displayed, displayed quite neatly. Uh, you can also do things like, for example, uh, you can just choose the values, use the chart with the vertical axis, like this, without the labels, and now you just move the chart inside the table, and now you have the combined solution. Um, values so you see you have it like this or um, you can do things like um, actual budget uh, just the vertical again you see the vertical one inserted here or um, add you know uh, for example the relative one let me just delete this so the same convention, you can also display the variance, you know, the relative variance, and you have another one. So you have now the relative variances here. You see, you can even move them inside the report. So for example, one, two columns, make them bigger, okay, a little bit bigger. Now you can move this one inside a table like this, and this one you move it here, oops, failed, like this. So you see, you get, um, yeah, you basically get a table with inserted charts. So this is only possible if you have vertical charts. So it's good to visualize structures uh, with waterfall charts, and if it's time, left to right. You really want to do this in a waterfall chart. Uh, let me quickly build an example. So, for example, let's say you have the sales in last year, so 2016. Then you have some variance because of the price. Let's say, uh, so let's do it like this, delta price. And then you have your variance because of the quantity. And you usually also have the uh, variance because of the mix, like this, or in some cases you might have um, 
um, you know, the variance in sales, so the growth of sales because of the new product, um, and then you will have your total, let me just do it like this, 2017, okay? So let's say last year's value was 100, this was my sales last year, then your prices are going down, so you had a negative effect of the prices, so for example, minus um, 20, now the quantity, maybe you sold, um, yeah, you were, um, you, you had some growth in the, in the volume, uh, in the sales um, volume, so it's like this, and then you also introduced some new products, which brought you another 25,000, for example, in sales from last year. And if you make a sum total, this is your end result. Okay, so you started with 2017. This is now equal. And this is your final result. I will add another equal sign here. And perfect example for the waterfall chart. Voila, like this. So you see, previous year, price, quantity, new products, and your end result. And then you add a difference highlight, which shows that 15% is your total growth from previous year. But now here you have the explanation of each variance. So this is a typical contribution analysis where you have uh, variances, and then you see how each type of variance contributes to the final to the total result. Uh, just a perfect example for the waterfall chart.